All right, all right. Let's talk about the Cowboys. Let's talk about the Cowboys. Mozzie Smith, shout out to the Michigan man, as he is the latest number one selection for your Dallas Cowboys. Uh, cut number two, hit me with cut number two. Mozzie Smith, what is your motivation now that you're in the National Football League? I say it like this: Every team I've been on, I've been, I've been, a, I've been one of the players that was going to help win the game, and that that got to continue. First off, you know what I'm saying, um, and I got to put the work in to become that, and uh, help this team win. Um, but the driving factor in my whole life, I always just wanted to be a dog. When I when I got on the field, uh, it's all about being a dog. It's all about, you know, making that man across from me remember me, you know, um, and that's that's kind of my driving. Motivation, you know, I don't want to be getting tossed around nowhere. You know, the <laughs> field is where I have fun at. Well, we will forever remember the name, Reg. Mozzie Smith as the guy that was taken number 26 overall. My man about a biscuit short of 340, but my man is a one tech that's going to clog up the middle and make things real clear for Leighton Van Der Esch, Damone Clark, Micah Parsons a time or two. And for Dan Quinn in this defense, another resource for him to utilize. If you were to describe the Cowboys draft in one word or a couple of words, how would you describe what the Cowboys were able to do with drafting Mozzie Smith and the other selections that they had this past weekend? Effective. Well, I like effective. With that, with that tone of voice. Okay. You to say effective. Okay. okay. It wasn't sexy. In no. fact, like uh, our friends at the Athletic ranked it the 24th best draft shout out to dane brugler uh, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. you to remember that i need you to remember that there are 32 clubs in the national football league so 24th not really inspired but that's the thing it wasn't really an inspired draft right like the the sexy pick of the bunch if you can call it that was in the sixth round and it was more of like a heartwarming story although i think people will come to like deuce vaughn as a football player not just as a uh, chris vaughn's son yeah not a sentimental pick with deuce vaughn I mean, but it is, but it's not, but it is, you know what I mean? So, but outside, like outside of that idea, what, what am I talking about? Offensive line, defensive line. These aren't the things that on draft day get you hyped. Although one thing I did notice watching the draft, um, the, the time that I did, uh, there are certain team uh, fans that I was like, oh, you don't know who this is. You're just cheering. Like, I, I feel like we've gotten to the place where we understand with the draft. We don't know that much. Like just the Royal, we stick with me. Um, but when it gets to the draft, we've had so many instances where we can go back in the archives of footage and be like, hey, they drafted like uh, someone like Aaron Donald. And everybody was like, who? So they booed the team and come to find out he was actually really good. And I think people have, you know, wised up and be like, I don't actually know. I don't actually know. So we, my team picked him. Woo! He probably <laughs> great. Let's That's go. my guy. That's my yeah. guy. Um, but that being the case, like this, this, I don't think this was one that inspired folks. In fact, in our Pluckers location. And Allen, it was you know it was kind of it was kind of uh, muted because there was tight ends were on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey Porter Jr. Joey was Porter on, Jr. On was the board. on the board. There were some interesting things, but Mozzie Smith makes sense mm -hmm. when you consider the ways in which towards the back half of that season last year, run defense was a problem. You went out and you made an in season trade, um, something that's a little out of the norm for this team. And when it actually paid attention to the interior defensive line with Jonathan Hankins, a guy that you re-signed this year for a one-year deal. Um, but that's a place that you have neglected just as an MO, as an organization. This shows a little bit of growth and shows like a very clear determination and making sure that's not going to happen ever again because that's what that dude's specialty is. In fact, to the point where knowing that we're going to complain about things, and I'm not saying that the complaints are necessarily wrong, not even getting to that point, but the complaint automatically came up you're taking a first round defensive tackle that can't pass rush well that we, we'll worry about that in later like that that's an add-on pack that's probably there right uh -huh. the idea of pass rushing possibilities being there with mozzie smith but he gonna stop that run and i think that that's that's an interesting portion of it for me but stopping the run ain't sexy especially not in the modern nfl where it feels like we've we've geared so much towards passing the football but todd archer was on sean and rj this morning he made a fantastic point or sorry, no, actually, not even Sean. Um, this is the wrong uh, point of the sh of the station. Michael Jr. was on Friday mm -hmm. with Sean and RJ, and one of the things he talked about, hey man, the blueprint for getting to the playoffs in the NFL: go through your division, and then go through your conference. And in your division, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of really good offensive linemen. They like running the football. They like doing that QB push. In fact, Michael Parsons on draft night said, "No more QB sneak." That's AJ. right. That's right. 
right? So you have that. You also talk about who has been your nemesis in the playoffs the last few seasons, the Niners. They like running that football. How about shutting all of that down, up the, at least up the middle, right? This is an effective pick for the Dallas Cowboys, although not a sexy one. Shout out to all 54 million of y'all who watched the NFL draft over the three days of the NFL draft in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, what I like in the draft for the Cowboys, too, is this because you're right, not anything sexy with Mozzie Smith being drafted at number 26. They select another Michigan man a little bit later on with Luke Schoonmaker as the tight end. I'm never going to say that right, by the way. Well, not never, but not anytime soon. Because <laughs> I always want to pronounce that H like Schoon, mm-hmm. Schoonmaker or Mocker. Mm-hmm. I might try and spice it up right there, and it's not necessary. Say it one more time for me. Uh, schoonmaker. Schoonmaker. All right, that, I'm going to try. Right. That's I'm right. do my best. Um, but at the same time, what I can the Dallas Cowboys draft to is like this. Room temperature water. Tasted like room temperature water. You say, Kevin, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? What I mean is, is that it hydrates you. It gets the job done, but not necessarily refreshing, if you will. Nothing real spicy about it. Nothing that gets you all charged up. But what it was, as you mentioned the word, effective. This is a Uh defense. That's right. This is a defense. (laughs) Hey, Ruben. That's right. That has not finished any better than 19th in the three years that Mike McCarthy's been here in terms of run defense. More importantly for me, another point of confidence in Dan Quinn sure. and what you want from this defense. Physicality, nastiness, toughness, Mike McCarthy, all of these things you are building with this defense. And for me, all three levels now have been solidified. If you believe Mozzie Smith is going to be a starter, which Mil- Will McClay said in the audio that we've heard uh, circulating throughout the day that they feel like they've got a quality starter in Mozzie Smith. You now, on all three levels, have a defense that you look at and say, okay, plays can be made by this defensive line with veterans in Demarcus Lawrence, obviously Micah Parsons as one of the best defensive players in the league. You've got Leighton Vanderesh, who had a resurgence in 2022. And then on the back end with your secondary with Stephon Gilmore, Trayvon Diggs, and then the three-headed monster with J. Ron Curse, Donovan Wilson, and Malik Hooker. You feel like you have a defense that can compete with anybody and as the team you mentioned, San Francisco, who has eliminated this team over the past couple of years, you can be in any ball game. The question is, will the offense be able to be as consistent as they need to be to score points? Because it looks like this defense isn't going to be giving up a lot of it based on what we project them to be this upcoming season. And I mean, it's kind of the same defense that you had last year, right? Like that's that's also something to be uh, to be noted. Um, we're focusing a lot on Mozzie and uh, obviously first round pick, understandably so. Um, some of his job is to keep the linebackers clean as well. That's right. Right. So in some ways, you're hoping to make those linebackers better by making cleaning up what they have to deal with so that they can be more effective. That There's that word again in their play. How did you feel about day two? Right. Because these are the guys that we can maybe point to as guys that you still anticipate affecting your team. Um, and then day three ends up being a little bit more, you know, speculative. But uh, Luke Schoonmaker. Right. Yep. All right. Fact. Fantastic. DeMarvion Overshone, mm-hmm. Junior Fihoko, of no relation. Um, how do we feel about those? Because Schoonmaker ends up being an interesting one. I think that this was in some ways indicative or like this was kind of sussed out when we talked about Stephen Jones in some ways giving the game away, but not in the way that we thought. Right. Sure. The idea of tight end being a really deep class. This is what we were all, I think we were all kind of hoping for. The idea that you don't have to take one in the first round. You don't have to take one all that early because if it has some depth, that means you probably will find a guy that you like after pick 26. And they seem to do that with Schoonmaker. And that points to some of this. um, I saw someone make the point where if Ezekiel Elliott isn't here for pass protection, you need to add some more dudes that can block, right? Schoonmaker ends up being some level of addition there. I don't think it necessarily covers up the deficiencies that you might have in picking up uh, in pass protection, but having more people that can block up pretty well, Schoonmaker adding into that, I think is helpful in addition to being able to have the hands and go and do these things down the field. And I think Bobby Belt has been one of the guys who has been one of his champions. And he's also pointed to the idea that Schoonmaker might have the upside to be that seam attacker, because I don't think, again, we're back in this place. We're talking about tight ends before we know anything about them. Because did anybody think that uh, Ferguson or Hendershot had the abilities that they seemed to be able to demonstrate in their first season, mind you? Sure. We talk about tight ends not necessarily producing early. So I think that this gives them an opportunity to, again, keep a, a wide group of tight ends and also have one that 
hopefully can really help blocking to add to uh, maybe almost get you closer to that six offensive lineman type feel yeah. at times when you have your tight end on the field. Shout out to Linda Wells who's going to be coaching up these tight ends again this upcoming season. He's going to have some work to do with Schoonmaker. Here's the thing that concerns me about him. He's already 25 years old. Sure. Has some injury concerns a little bit coming into this draft. And while the upside is there, how much more productive and what is his ceiling to ensure that he's getting the most value that you are able to hopefully get as a guy that's going to be part of the safety blanket for Dak Prescott and this offense. It's interesting with Overshone, the linebacker from Texas, got some position versatility, a little hybrid safety linebacker, got a lot of speed, quickness to him, yeah. and can do a lot of things if you're deciding to move him to weak side linebacker to let him roam around and go make plays a little bit. So look, overall, what the Cowboys were able to do in addressing their defensive tackle position, getting the tight end that I'm sure Mike McCarthy was thrilled to get based on the way that he was describing his tight ends going into this draft, adding other resources in terms of another linebacker, another interior presence with Pahoko there. He is the second cousin, by the way, of one Vita Vea. Now, if you remember Vita Vea back in the 2018 draft and what he's done in his career, you might think there. hopefully there is some of that rubbing off on Mr. Fahoko coming to Dallas. The rest of the draft, other than Deuce Vaughn, which I think was a terrific pick, not just for the value, but he's a hell of a football player. Fun. All of 5'5", five, a buck 79, but is a dino when the, the ball is in his hands. Asim Richards, okay, cool. You're able to get a little offensive line depth. Eric Scott Jr., a guy who a lot of people may have thought could have been an undrafted uh, free agent. Mm -hmm. For Dane Brugler, you talked about Dane Brugler and his um, draft grades that he had was not a write-up at all for his particular beast. He's just like, this is a name that is also with it. Yeah, I think that's yeah. some of the reason why this is not a highly regarded Dallas Cowboys um, draft class. But again, this that that is only that can only take us so far. I would like to see how these players factor in within the team and also remembering. And this is not an excuse because again, we might get to the place where we're like, yeah, waste, you know, wasted picks or what have you, right? Not accumulating the value that you want. Um, but this was a team that came into the draft having a lot of these holes papered over, except for kicker, which they did not take a flyer on. That's a little disappointing. Um, but come on down, Robbie Gold or Mason Crosby. All right, fantastic. <laughs> the retreads. Um, but no, they they got a whole bunch of like depth type things. Didn't really add to the wide receiver room all that strong. Jalen Brooks in the seventh no, round. That'll be not. interesting to yeah. talk about. Shout out to Jalen Tolbert. Um, but I'm interested to see how these things come together once we get mini camp camp all those things but interesting interesting at the yeah. very least right like i don't i don't think we looked up and we're like oh this there's nothing interesting here there's some interesting things here i just don't think that they jump off the page and we'll see how how much of a problem or lack thereof that yeah. ends up being once we get around to camp the last thing i'll say on it is vision what is the vision for these players specifically for dan quinn when it comes to mozzie smith Overshown, Fajoko, what is he able to do to bring his vision to the player? Because much like how Micah Parsons, we didn't see the pass rushing skills that he ultimately showed and developed throughout the course of his first couple of years. Dan Quinn in this defense understood what they had in Micah Parsons. You're hoping the same when it comes to Smith, Overshown, and others on this defense for them to be able to get the most out of them. But the Cowboys have their nose tackle in the middle. Mozzie Smith. He's listed at 6'3", 323. My man looks more like he's about 340. Not going to lie to you. Big, big man. Big boy. In the middle to anchor the middle of that defense.